Deploying your application to Kubernetes is not easy, unless until now. Let me show you how you can deploy to AKS in less than five minutes without even writing the deployment scripts in YAML and even the CI CD scripts. Let's get into it. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coded Dave. Today I'm gonna show you how easy it could be to deploy to Kubernetes using the power of AKS, Azure Kubernetes Service, and GitHub. Using the AKS Deployment Center, in fact, you don't need to write the YAML manifest files for Kubernetes. Actually, you don't even need to create your CI CD workflow. All you need is a Docker file for your application and five minutes or less of your time. Let's dive into it. As I said before, the only thing you need is the Docker file for your application. And in fact, you can see that here I have my Docker file and my application. If I open the Docker file, it's a very simple one. As you can see, the application is in .NET 5, so I do have the base container for the SDK of .NET 5. And the only thing I'm doing here is doing the build of the application and then publish the result using the ASP.NET 5 container image and setting the entry points. I don't do anything else. So let's jump into Azure in our AKS cluster. Here we have the AKS cluster I will use for this demo. You can see all these properties, but this is not what I want to focus on because in fact, if we scroll down, we have this deployment center preview item in the menu over here. So let's click on it. And this is where the magic happens. I already have one deployment and we will talk about this in a second, but I want to do a completely new deployment for the application I've just shown you. Add project and I will select the repo where my code is, which in this case is GitHub. I click next and Azure needs, of course, the authorization to connect to my GitHub repo. So I'll just click on authorize. I'll pick my repo, which is K8S examples and the main branch. I click on next. AKS already found the Docker file that I have in my repo, the one I was showing you a second ago. And we can see that it is exactly the same one and already guessed that the port I want to connect to is the port 80 because it's a web application and already set the Docker build context in the slash app folder, which is where my Docker file and my sample application are saved. So I can just click on next because I don't want to change anything. And now I can decide if I want to select an existing namespace or create a new one. Yeah, let's just leave this one. And I can also decide if I want to use an existing container registry or a new one. In this case, I will use an existing one because I've already created it. And it's this KRS examples SCR. And that's basically it. When I click on done, this is where all the magic of AKS comes in place. What this is doing is creating the Kubernetes deployment scripts for me, creating my CI CD workflow with GitHub Actions for me, and initiating the deployment. This will take just a few seconds. And in fact, we are already done. If now I go back to my GitHub repo, I can see two things. First thing is I have this manifest folder that I didn't have before, which has been created one minute ago, and that contains my manifest files for Kubernetes. I have this service and deployment file. And if we open that up, we can see that the process created a image for me in the Azure Container Registry I've selected with the name of the cluster. I already set two replicas for HA and all the rest, again, it's completely set up by the script. If we go back to the workflows, I can see that now I have this deployed to AKS cluster YAML file for GitHub action that once again, AKS created for me with everything I need to be able to deploy to AKS. And I didn't have to write anything of that. AKS and GitHub did this for me automatically. And if we go to our actions, we can see that we have the action in progress, which is building and deploying my application. Now it's created a namespace. So it's already built the image, creating the secrets, and now it's deploying to Kubernetes. We can see all the output coming in from the Kubernetes deployment. And now the action is done. So our application is deployed in the AKS cluster. And once again, I didn't have to write any of these. I just had my application with my Docker file and AKS took care of all the Kubernetes files, the CI CD part, and the integration between GitHub and Azure. That was really quick and easy, right? Now that we have our application deployed, let's see what we can get out of the deployment center. Spoiler alert, it's a lot of information. By the way, if you like this video or you find it insightful, just click on the like button below 
It will help this video to be recommended to other viewers and would really mean a lot to me. The amount of information you can get out of Deployment Center and what you can actually do is mind-blowing. We have these two namespaces, the default namespace that I had before, and I also have now this new namespace that is being created as part of this ad project experience. So let's click on it. And in here, I can see basically my whole cluster. I know that I have this deployment, which is the one we've just created with two replicas out of two working perfectly. And I can take a look at my pods, replica set, stateful set, etc., etc. Now, I want to go deeper into this deployment. So what I would do is just clicking on the deployment name, and this will take me to all the properties I can see. Let me make this smaller. So I can see that I have two pods as we've seen before, and I can even go deeper into each pod. And again, let me make this smaller. I can see the containers, volumes, and conditions of each of my pod. And I can still click on each container and see all of its properties. This is really cool, isn't it? And of course, if I go back a level, I can have the insights, live logs, and so on and so forth. Let's check the live logs. Let's select the pod. And here we have our logs coming in directly from our pod. All right, that's it for today. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about the AKS Deployment Center. I know that it's not the ideal tool in some scenarios, especially the more complex ones, but I think it's a hell of a tool, especially when you're starting out with Kubernetes. But that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coded Dave. <laughs>